Hello. Hello. Okay, so just we will wait for uh, five minutes because only 32 attendees have attended the course. So just we will wait it. Okay, so please join as early as possible. Okay, so I will just summarize what actually we did in the last lecture in last webinar session. So what we learned is that we learned we started with the unit number six architecting for the cloud based practices and I told you that this unit is completely on AWS Amazon web service. Okay, so we saw the business benefits of cloud computing. Then we saw the technical benefits of cloud computing, right? So these are very important uh, things for the exam. Just a minute. So 39 attendees now. So please join the webinar as per the time. Only 39 people. So, so we talked about the uh, business benefits of cloud computing. Then we talked about the technical benefits of cloud computing. Then we understood the Amazon Web Service Cloud. What are the services that are available with the AWS? and how I can choose it, right? So uh, this practically not we have seen for all the components, for all the services, uh, just like we seen the AC2, okay? We seen a RDS, right? We seen a S3, right? So these are the some basic services of AWS. We saw it and we are going to use these services for our project, right? So now in today's lecture, uh, we will look for a uh, next bit of this unit and also we will look for elastic load balancer. So today uh, practically I will show you uh, how to create a load balancer and how to balance the load between the instances, right? So uh, the idea is like this, uh, you are having a two EC2 servers, okay? So consider this example, you are having a two EC2 servers and on these two EC2 server, EC2 instance, you have deployed a same application. The application is same, right? So both are running there. So now what you want to do is that you want to balance the workload among these EC2 instances. So how I can do it, right? This is a question. So the answer for is what? Elastic load balancer. So you just create a load balancer and you manage the workload among these two instances. So it means that some workload, some request will go to instance one and some request will go to what? instance two. So this can be done. Is this clear? So this is actually practically we will see that is an elastic load balancer, right? So now uh, just let me check how many people, 43 people. Okay, so I think uh, we will start it now, right? So We'll come to the today's topic that is a cloud concept. Okay, so this is everything is with respect to AWS only. So in this unit, you are talking about only the AWS architecting the AWS, right? So now you require some concepts of a cloud. You need to know about some concepts of the clouds that what kind of the architecture or what kind of the services or what kind of the things it provides us, right? So we will see those uh, a cloud concept. So uh, the questions can come like what, uh, write a short note on what building a scalable architecture, right? So see here, this is the first that cloud concept that our AWS is using. That is a building a scalable architecture. The word it, itself indicates scalable architecture. So scale up and scale down both should happen here, right? So now, so the questions will be like this. Also the questions might come is like, what are the characteristics of a scalable applications, right? So if your uh, application is there, 
if you want to scale that application scale up and scale down so what characteristics actually the need of that scalable application so that will also so like this the questionnaire is i told you that uh, the theoretical concepts will be here also plus you need to explore what kind of the service can be used for which kind of the problem or scenario so those kind of the questions will be there on unit number 6 right now we'll start with the building the scalable architectures right so now it is very critical to build a scalable architectures in order to take the advantage of our scalable infrastructures right so here there are two things scalable architecture and scalable infrastructure right so infrastructure is nothing but the hardware which is provided us right so that should be also scalable and whatever the application you have designed the applications you have architected that architecture should be also scalable right so if you are uh, bringing the balance between these two things then only you can go forward a scalable thing right so your architecture should be also scalable and your infrastructure also should be scalable right so we'll talk about this so now the cloud aws cloud is basically designed to provide conceptually infinite scalability right so everything is available for is you can scale it at your demand side right? so it's available if it is not there then you can request to the aws then they can make you the provision for your servers right so but the problem is what you cannot leverage all the scalability in infrastructures if your architecture is not scalable right so see here if you are uh, uh, there is a scalable in infrastructure but if your architecture is not capable of a scalable, scalable then what is so this may, might be a problem right so you need to think about both these things scalable architecture also and scalable infrastructure also right so both have to work together then only you can we can get a scalable thing right so you will have to identify a monolithic components and bottleneck in your architectures so you need to find you need to design your architect the such thing so that it should be a scalable it should not have any bottlenecks in your architecture that this is going to happen the problem and all right so uh, basically this is talking about what my the, the scalable architectures right now basically the scalable architecture is done for some applications so what are actually the characteristics of those scalable applications right so increasing the resource results in a proportional increase in performance right so basically if we are increasing the resources so what actually it gives us that it will gives us a increase in performance right so it's a crash sticks. now second a scalable service is capable of handling heterogeneity okay so heterogeneity has uh, told you that uh, different platforms okay so it should support the different platforms if so that's why a scalable should service it should capable for handling the heterogeneity now a scalable service is operationally efficient right so operationally efficient means what efficiency should be there performance should be there operationally right so we should get the performance whatever we have desired right now a scalable service is resilient so resilient to what basically a failures right if there are any failures if there are any disasters right so it should not fail okay or if it fails then what actually you did to encounter this failing right so we'll look for this now a scalable service should become more cost effective when it grows right so it's very important right means if the aws is providing the scalable service and if they are charging more then it's not good right so it should be your cost effective so that's why you need to architect your applications your architecture in such a way that it should be a very cost effective okay now as i told you this uh, unit is going to talk about the architecting now what actually the architecting means the architecting means what it's a designing okay if you are going to deploy the application then how this uh, deploying the applications which kind of the aws services it will use us it will give us okay so that it is a cost effective 
it is a operationally efficient it is a resilient to the failures okay it should handle the heterogeneity and it should increase the performance right so you need to consider these parameters while uh, designing a scalable architectures right so now we'll come to what a second concept that you need to learn and understand is what understanding the elasticity right so the word itself indicates elasticity is what the changing things right so uh, the changing right so here also now two terms will be there so these are very important terms that you need to remember for your exam the first in the scale up approach and second one is a traditional scale out approach these are two different things okay so what is a scale up okay now basically the scale up and scale down okay the word itself indicates scale up up means what you are increasing the instance value or let us say that if you are having a 2 gb of a ram okay and for that instance then you can make that 2 gb of another instance to 4 gb for that instance only that's what a scale up or in other words we can scale a vertical scaling so a vertical scaling is that right so the vertical scaling already i think i talked about this vertical scaling so this is nothing what is that uh whenever we uh, add uh, more power to the ec2 instances then it will become a scale up if we decrease the power of that ec2 instance same then it will become scaled down okay so basically for understanding the elasticity you should know about these two approaches scale up scale down and another one approach is what scale out now this is a different one scale out and scaling so please be there right so we are having a first approach as a scale up and scale down and second approach is what scale out and scale in now what is a scale out so basically the scale out is what adding the more instances of such type okay means let us say that if you are having a 2 gb of ram and if you want to add one more 2 gb of ram then you can add it so this is called as the scale out so what actually you are doing is that you are adding the resources the same instance types you are adding it over there right this is scale out and scale in is what a decrease in the resources if you are initially having a, a 2 gb of ram two instances and if you reduce one instance right so this will become a scale in okay so basically uh, this scale up and scale down approaches are very important right so i will just read it so not worrying about the scalable application architecture and investing heavily in larger and more powerful computers right i just talked about more powerful computers we want instead of 2 gb ram we want a 4 gb ram for a same instance a vertical scaling right so to accommodate the demands right now a scale out a creating an architectures that scales horizontally and investing in infrastructure and small chunks right so it scales horizontally horizontally means what the number of instances will be more here right so uh, basically your web application so most of the, the business and large scale web application is going to follow this pattern because you are having a same type of instance multiple instances will be there right so that's what a scale out approach is there right now uh, basically both these approaches have an initial startup cost and both approaches are reactive in nature right so this is just the analysis they did it right so from this what you will understand is what you will understand the elasticity right so it is giving us the information about the elasticity that is a scale up approach and scale out approach right now see here the information is given this is a predicted demand so whatever this line is showing here so this is indicating a predicted demand so predicted demand means what uh this demand we have predicted so it might go like this right now there is an actual demand so how actually this is a red line is indicating actual demand so actually how actually my application is behaving, behaving how it is using the server center all right now there are two approaches will be here that is what a scale up and traditionally scale out right so these dotted lines are indicating here this is a scale up approach okay and this is indicating your scale out approach right 
and this is indicating your automated elasticity right so you will see all these things right so here you just lost your customer so see here there is one uh, important uh, part that i have mentioned here is that in this portions also what is this portion this is actually the actual demand okay this red line is indicating the actual demand right this is the elasticity that you are getting okay and this is your this is a scale up approach and this thing so in between here you uh, you are not giving us the elasticity to the customer so you can lose your customers here this is clear to all right so this understand i think uh, for exam perspective point it's not uh, important right so there is no need to draw these diagrams and all but you should know that if you are not properly planning if you are not architecting if you are not planning for your application so you might lo lose your customers over there right so now will uh, so uh, you just just read all this thing is are uh, indicating about the uh, what we have discussed here what are the parameters and how they are how the elasticity is there right so we'll come to what now here the uh, the next one is what a not fearing constraints right so this is the third concept that we are learning not fearing constraints the word itself indicates fearing constraints not fearing constraints right so it might happen is that it might happen right it might happen that the aws can't provide you whatever you require see here what i'm what i'm telling is that what i'm saying is that right so so when you decide to move your applications to the cloud and try to map your system specifications to those available in the cloud okay means what you are looking is that actually it is running here now it is requiring a 2.5 gb of ram right it is requiring a 3 gb of ram or whatever the things right so it if you are mapping your system specifications what is available in your on premise and whether it is the same thing is available there or not okay because you will look for this if you are using a 3 gb of ram then you will expect that the aws is also provide me the 3 gb of ram but it happened that the 3 gb ram is not available so they will say that 2 gb is available they will say 4 gb is available right so this kind of thing happen so you will notice that the cloud might not might not have the exact specifications if you are going i want exact specification so it it might possible right of the resources so that you have on, on premise so for example a cloud does not provide a x amount of a ram in a server right you will say if you are saying i want 2.5 gb of a ram okay if you say the 3 gb of ram if it is not available with the aws you can get a 4 gb of a ram right so these are basically the thing what uh, it should not you should not fear about this constraints over there right also it might happen that uh, my database needs to have much more iops so what is iops this is the input output operations per second right so uh, whatever actually you are needing it you are needing uh, 50000 iops and uh, these are not available with it but by combining the some multiple things you can get it those things is this clear right so let us say that if you are asking i want a 600 gb of ram and if the 600 gb of ram is not available with the aws then what you can do is that if the 300 gb of ram is available they, then you can you will use a 300 gb of ram the toys yes or no right so you should understand that cloud provides the abstract resources and they become a powerful when you combine them with the on demand provisioning models right so uh, the basic thing or the concept that you will learn is that you should not be afraid and constrained when using a cloud resources because it is important to understand that even if you might not get an exact replica of your hardware which is running in your own uh, environment in your uh, what is on premise environment and it is not available in your cloud environment you have the ability to get more of those resources in the cloud to compensate the need okay so the example they are given just i talked about this example also if the cloud does not provide you the exact or greater amount of a ram in a server try using a distributed catch like a main catch right now see here the one more concept you can use what 
a main cache right so let us say that if you are using a ram and if you are getting not that ram so there is another options that you can use there is another service then you can combine with your application and you can use it for your uh, just that application is what basically main cache elastic cache is there so basically this is main cache is comes under elastic cache service right so you can use it those things right so if your database needs more iops and it does not directly map to the cloud so there are several recommendations so what you can do is that you can choose from depending on your typical data and use cases okay so based on your application if it is a read heavy read heavy means what let us i will consider example of a blog right so if i uh, i'm having my blog and i'm writing something uh, very important and all over the world people are reading right so only they are reading they are not writing anything so these kind of applications are read heavy applications where reading is done okay you are the, the people are reading your blogs right your people are reading your posts right so these are read heavy kind of application so you need to look for your applications in what kind of category it will come whether it is a write heavy or whether it is a read heavy applications right so based on that you are going to architect the things right so you can distribute the read load across the fleet of synchronized slave so this is called as a replica in terms of rds will say as a replica so you can create a different different replica where the all over the users can read can uh, read my post or they can read my blog right so this can be possible right so alternately you can use a sharding algorithm also right this is available uh, uh, your uh, uh, completely it's not uh, needed to know what is the sharding algorithm and all right so these are the things that you can use it means the uh, the concept which behind this is what you should not be feared or you should not be afraid about thing that the cloud is not providing me the exact specification whatever i am asking right so you should not right so now comes to what the next is what a virtual administration okay so this is a virtual administration is very important right now in a company earlier we are having got system administrator right so now the role has been changed the role has been changed from system administrator to the virtual system administrator okay so what actually the rbs system administrator was doing was that he was doing he was doing the daily task right what daily task he was doing he was doing a maintenance he was installing a software right whatever the necessary softwares are required so he is installing and he is looking for all the communications and networking and everything right this is a task of our system administrator earlier but when a aws came then the concept or the task which was done by the system administrator it has changed okay now we will look for that so it has changed the virtual system administrator so this simply means that the daily task this simply means that the daily task performed by these administrator have now become even more interesting as they learn more about the application and decides was the best for business whole now they are going to give the much time for deciding the applications okay and it should give us the business value right so uh, the system administrator earlier no longer has a need to provision a servers because he was provi pro providing the servers installing the softwares which are required wire up the network devices right so now this this works is not going to be done by system administrator because everything is going to be managed by, by aws you are just using it the infrastructure is directly available on the aws you are just using it by having some few clicks right by having up some few clicks you are getting all this in so you are not doing a hardware maintenance yes or no right you are not doing any os patching so everything will look by what the aws right what actually you are doing is that you are just using the services by having some clicks and some command line calls right so by using this only you are going to interact with that aws environment so now the work is very easier so so that the system administrator can focus more on an application now right so the cloud encourages automation because the infrastructure is a programmable right so 
you can automate the things right so i think i have shown you in a practical i have shown you how you can do atom uh, automations right so the best example is what a python script you can write a python script okay to automate the infrastructure of aws infrastructures right so i shown you to to take the daily snapshot to take the daily backup there is no need to go to the aws console and take the backups and all right so there is no need so by having your command line just execute the python script that automatically it will do for you that's yes all right so this is possible so automations can be done right so also the role of database administrator is also changed now right so database administrator now become virtual database administrator right so earlier database administrator was doing a uh, hardware checkups and all these things day by day he was checking right now everything has changed it right so because virtual database administrator is only responsible for to look for the instance configurations of that rds right so the rds is a server in aws which we are using for as a database right so we can use these things right for our applications right so this is about the virtual administrations we are going to talk about it right so these are basically the second uh, part we can say about the, some cloud concepts that we are going to learn it right so the questions can come like this what write a short note on or explain the things about these topics right so the next bit that where i'm going to cloud based practices right so it's very important cloud based practices i think this uh, bit we will see in the next lecture because it's a very big one right so it's more important and it's very important because uh, you see that uh, for totally this topic is going for around uh, 10 pages right so uh, best practices so what is the best practices if you are going for a aws then what best practices you will follow so that there should not be any problem to your applications right so one example here is what a uh, one best practice what a uh, design for failure and nothing will fail right so what it means if your design is considering the failure part then if it is considering the failure part while architecting then nothing is going to fail why nothing is going to fail because you have designed your application in a such a way that you have designed the AWS service in such a way that if there is any failure happens, then it should it should recover very uh, it should recover uh, in very less downtime or automatically you should recover it. Right? So you have to design for it, right? So this best practice. So there are such best practices are available. So we will look for those best practices available in the next lecture. Now what we'll today will do is that uh, we'll uh, go for the practical. I told you that I'm going to show you about the elastic load balancers, right? So how the load balancer is going to work here, right? So now what actually we need now, right? So I will come to that first now. So basically we need a ec2 instances because you are going to distribute a load so obviously you require what ec2 instances right so what i will do is that i will go here and i will uh, create a ec2 instances now i require a two ec2 instances right so we'll go for here we'll create a ec2 instance which is uh, where we can distribute the load there right so we'll come to this now okay so i think uh, these procedures i think you are knowing about this okay so i will select uh, ubuntu let us say this is a free tire eligible right so then i will select uh, which is a free tire available go to the next then what i will do is that i will create a two instances of the same time now i am creating a two instances here right so everything i will put as a by default here okay go to the next add storage right so this storage will be also the same so i am not changing anything so i am not adding any dax here right this comes to the security groups right so i will select some existing security groups which are available there right so so let us say that i will go for this web server security groups right so i will choose this web server security group and i will say review and launch okay and i will launch here instances 
now it is asking me to select a key pair so i selected the web one as a key pair so i am launching the instances right so these instances will be launched two instances will be there so just click on here view instances so you will look these two instances will be uh, in now in a pending state so very shortly it will it will be in running state right so what we will do is that we'll go to here this load balances right now where you will find this load balancer so basically in this ec2 console only you will see the load balancer so if you scroll down here you will see there is a load balancer okay so right click and this page will be here right so this is a load balancer right now before creating a load balancer you need to create a target group so now what is this concept of target group now why it actually it is required right? so we will see it and we will look for these things right so i will go for this load balancer now right so what is happening here is what now these two instances are in a running states right so what i will do is that now i will open these okay so what i'll do is that i will go for both are having a web one only right so uh before creating a load balancer what i will do is that i will install some apache servers here on these instances because i have i need one more uh, web application so if i need an application then i need to install apache server and all right so what i'll do is that i will uh, this will be available so i will connect with the chrome apps right so i will use a secure shell app right so you can use your putty and all this thing for performing this it's very important and uh, it's so what i'll do is that i will choose this first instance now i will take this public ip then i will put this public ip here and the username is ubuntu only right because we have chosen ubuntu so username is ubuntu and identity is a web one so just enter a connect right so it will be connecting just put as an s and it has connected right so it has connected so we are connected to the first instance right so what we are doing is what first we'll uh, what we'll do is that we'll uh, uh, go to the root user as a and we will first I will do a update now first. Okay. So it will update the all the packages which are required here. Update. So once update is over, then what I will do is that I will install the Apache 2, right? So apt dash apt dash install and Apache 2, right? So it will install the Apache server, right? So it has installed the Apache server. Okay, fine. So what I will do is that I will use this IP address here now, and if I put here, then I will get to know whether Apache is installed or not. yes. It's perfectly working. It's a fine, right? So we have installed the Apache also. So what we will do is that we will create now one file over there. So index to rod HTML, right? Sorry, VI index to rod HTML. So this is opening now. So what I can do is that I will just write a simple code. Okay. And I will say this is a web one. Okay. So this is a web one. Right. So I will save this one. This is index to dot HTML. So I will check it whether it is a working or not. Right. So public index to dot HTML. Right. So it's working. Right. So it's over now. Now what I will do is that I will just do an exit and I will go for now second instance connections. Right. So I will connect it a second instance. So I will go for this year. Now this I have chosen the second instance now. So I will use this IP address here. Then again, I will go to this Chrome apps, right? 
so after going to the this chrome app i will go to this secure shell app right so i will just only change the ip address here because this is only the ip address i need to change it right so everything is same web one only right so it is connecting now just press s it has connected right okay so what i first do is that i will just go to the sudo su then a pt dash get and i will say this update right so it will update everything so then i will go for uh installing apache 2 in second instance so i will go for this so apt dash get install apache 2 right so it will install the apache 2 server okay so after installing the apache 2 server what i will do is that i will go for now applications application means what i what i do so it will be there so cd var ww and html right so I will go here and what I will do is that I will create index2.html. Same name file I need to create it, right? So what I will do is that I will go here and uh, I will type the HTML, okay? And I will go for a header and this is web, this is web2, right? And this is ending the HTML. This is working fine, right? So I will go here, say where now it is there, right? So what is that? I will check it here or click. So index 2html right? So this is working now, right? So this is an index uh, one, index two, both are working now, right? So what I can do is that I will go here now for load balancer, right? So I will click here uh, application load balancer. I will create it uh, application load balancers, right? So I will give the ALB, the name, okay? The name I will give you, and it is going to direct toward uh, the HTTP. It will listen the HTTP listeners, right? So it will be available in what? US 2A, 2B, and 2C, right? So this load balancer will be available in all these, uh, what do you say, that roles, right? Now, security setting, there is no need to do things. Now, you have to select us some security groups also. So let us say I will choose on the web server here. So just go to the next now. So target groups, right? So already we are not having a target group. So what we will do is that we will create a first target group, AS1. It is going to the instances, right? So it will direct to the HTTP, right? So next go to register the target. So a target is nothing but is what you have to put your EC2 instance details over there, right? So if you go here, so these are the two instances are there we have created right so i will just do it i will add to this registered group so this came here right so you will look for these instances came here right so these are registered one right so go to the next review and create it right so what it will do is that it will create a load balancer and successfully it has created a load balancer right so see here so once you create a load balancer it will appear here right so you need to go for you need to go for this DNS name, right? So if I go for this DNS name, if I copy it, right? So if I go here, right? So it is not opening anything, right? So if I go here and index to dot HTML, right? So it's not opening here. So it might be a problem of our, a security groups. It might be a problem of our, a security group because the security groups that we have not configured according to this, right? So for that, what you need to do is that you need to go for a security groups here, right? So you will go for a security groups here. So in security groups, you need to plan like uh, properly so that it can accept the things. So I will go for this uh, web server here. I will just go to this inbound rules, right? So if I go to this edit inbound rules, right? So you will see that both are having the same security groups and they are going to accept the connections from anywhere. So this is going to have the HTTP SSS access, which can be permitted for all the things, right? So what I will do is that anywhere, right? So it will add the anywhere tag here, right? So it can be added from uh, IPv64 also and all this, right? So these are the things that added. So this MySQL error, I'm not needing it, right? 
so http and https so both are added here right so sss access is made here right so what you do is that just save a rule okay so just back we check it what is the problem here so on port 80 right so http s 43 https right so i think what we'll do is that we will delete this https we don't need this https error modifying error will back problem is that okay so we'll come to our this lower balance right so uh, once you create a load balances, what you will get is that you will get this DNS name, right? So based on this DNS name, you can uh, communicate to all those EC2 instances, right? So you will see the listeners are available here. So these listeners are nothing but is that who are going to work or whose request will come here. So based on these requests, you are going to these, uh, we will use it, these things, right? So this uh, load balances application load balancer is also going to our uh, ip address right so this is available so whether you are going for ipv4 whether ipv6 so basically for ipv6 it is not supporting right so it is available in all these things uh, configurable so you can use these things right so it will take some time now because of a catchy right so it's instead of provisioning applications the target group should come here then only they will work right so we'll go for this target group need to check a uh, health checks targets targets are nothing but what the things okay It is actually currently passing with this sex, so we will see it. We'll wait it for a minute. Five four six B VPC. So whether it is has taken into the created VPC, let me check it. So we'll come here and check it. Yes, yes, it's a problem of VPC. Right, right. yes it's a problem of vpc so what is that i will prepare one video where i will show you that how actually this load balancer will work in complete details giving about the how to create a load balancer right so we will talk about this right 
it's we'll go to this local answer and ec2 instances so i will go for this images load balances This nurse is also okay. So tracks target groups. They are listening on port 80. Okay, so I will prepare a video for it and uh, I will share it with you all, right? So I'm preparing the video for some of the services because uh, basically that you need it for your exam also, right? So theoretically we talked about those services, but we'll look for these things. So if anybody have any questions, then please ask me the questions or you can just raise your hand. You can raise your hand so that I can make you as a speaker for asking the questions or you can just ask the questions yes please go for our questions any questions for today's topic Yes. Any questions? Uh, the question is whether creating a target group is free on AWS. Yes, it's a completely free. The there will be only charge for your uh, load balancers, right? So that is also free only for some limited time only, right? Not for all the time, for some limited time it is free, right? So is Secure Shell app, we don't require PPK file? No, for Secure Shell app, we don't require any PPK file, right? So directly you need to uh, create their pub file, public file and some another file. So based on that, you can use it. but uh, try to use this secure shell app in your laptop only right now next questions for any questions i will create a video on this lower balances right so i will look for what actually the problem has happened because i have changed my reason region right so sometimes these things are working in some regions and all right so i will look for what actually the problems happen and i will prepare a video for it already you are knowing is that uh, how to create a instances and all and how to make a web applications and i will just make it a load balances to work where it is going to distribute the traffic right so based on that uh, we will do it because as far as security group is also is uh, i think it's okay but we will look for a security groups if any other questions are there, then please ask me the questions. I will just check it. So this port it is are okay. HTTPS is okay port it is available there where you can get a request from these HTTPs right 
So I will look for this. So any please questions, then please ask me. Any questions? It should access as an index.html. It's not accessing. We'll look for it. So, any questions, please go ahead. In projects, we have to use a S3 for images and videos. So, we have to give URL to the source attribute. Yes. You have to give the source attributes URL. Okay. The S3, after storing the S3 files, images files, you will get uh, a link over there and you have to provide it to your source attributes there. Right. That's correct. So, any questions? Okay, so uh, what we learned today is that we are learned some cloud concepts which are basically required. So in the next uh, lecture, next webinar section, we'll uh, see the last part of it, right? So AWS specific cloud best practices, right? Or yes, uh, uh, when is presentations, right? So presentations uh, we will uh, will plan in the next week. Okay, I will just give the time. So just work on your AWS thing. So what are the compulsory part that you should have is what? You should have some EC2 instances where your app, web application is running. You should have the RDS instance where you are deployed your uh, database and uh, S3, right? So basically these three are mandatory that you should be there. Okay, so if anyone wants to use an elastic load balancer, then they can use it, no issue, right? So you can use it an elastic load balancer. So if it is possible, right? So I said is that I will prepare a video for this uh, load balancers, elastic load balancers, and very shortly uh, I will uh, upload on a YouTube and I will share it with you so that you can use it, right? So uh, the elastic load balancers I told you that uh, if you are using a classic load balancer, then uh, there is no charge for it, right? But if you are uh, using any uh, what it says that. Uh, uh, network load balancers so do not try to use a network load balancers because it is a costly also right and it's not a free right so uh, i think classic load balancer and application load balancers are free but only for at some time right not for all the time so any other questions any other questions right so for our presentations i told you that in the next week we will uh, plan the presentations i told you that uh, not only the skype okay if uh, you are using any another tools, uh, just like say if you are using a Zoom, okay, I think Zoom is a free, so you can use it those tools. It's not like compulsory. So, but let me know what tool you are using because the same arrangements I need to make it on my laptop also, so that there will be interactions, right? So I told you that this is a review and uh, this review is a projects review where I'm going to ask you some question also. And based on that evaluation is going to happen, right? So it should be a completely interactive, right? So any way you choose it, I don't have any problem, any technology or any software, anything that is available, right? So you choose it, but let me know what actually you are choosing it, right? If you are familiar with the Skype and you go for a Skype, or you can use it any another technology, but let me know so that I can configure the things on my laptop. Okay. So in our next week, uh, there will be a review. So what I'm planning is that uh, every day there will be a 10 reviews. Okay. I'm planning every day there will be the 10 reviews. 
so these uh, review will happen according to our group numbers i am having the excel sheet file i will share that excel sheet file so on that i have given the group numbers group 1 2 3 4 right so like this first 10 groups or what will do the first 10 groups uh, on first day then next